This is a video to help you get familiar with Microsoft Office Word 2013. This is a new version that's already installed on the student computers and will be installed on the faculty and staff computers in the upcoming months. Now to get started when opening Word 2013, an immediate noticeable change is the first page. You'll need to select a type of document. If you're interested in using a template, you can choose those options here. And then there's some suggested searches here that you can search for online templates. If you need to open a recent document, it's here on Open Other Documents. You can click that and you'll get the option of Recent Documents. For this purpose right now, well, I'm just going to simply click on Blank Document. And this opens up your Blank Document page. Notice the color is different. The background is a lot less cluttered. You still have your ribbon here at the top. There may be a few things that are different. A quick access toolbar that you can easily change. You can hit the little drop down arrow. Notice that the check marks are by three of them. Those are the three that show up here. If you want to add something that you use often, you simply click on it and it'll put a check. And I'll add the print preview. You can also, if you decide you do not want it, you simply click on it again to remove the check and it'll take the option off. The most important difference that you'll always be using is the file tab. If you click on it, you have sort of the same options over on the left side. You can open a new document if you need to do that and you'll see your recent documents are listed here. You do not automatically have a OneDrive account. If you choose to use Microsoft OneDrive, you could log in with your Microsoft account. But here at JD, we do not use that. So for now, all you need to worry about is recent documents and computer. Computer location is where you'll see your My Documents desktop, or you can simply click Browse if you have something from a USB drive. Now you have your Save on the left side and Save As. And right now I'm using a new document, so I wouldn't have to click Save As. And it's the same thing as the Open. You have your computer location. You can choose to save it in these recent folders here, or click on Browse if you need to save it to a jump drive. If you click on Browse, same thing as the Open. Over on the left side, you can scroll down to find, this is if you're looking for a jump drive. It'll be in your computer location, and you'll see it listed. You'll also see the print location. If you click on it, it's the same as the older version that you're using now. Your print preview is here on the right side. Your print settings is over on the left right here. Your copies, the printer you're printing to. If you have more than one that you can print to, you can do the drop down and select the one you need. And then you also have settings that you can quickly change right there before you print. If you're done with the file menu, you can click the arrow that points to the left and it'll take you out of that menu. Back to your document. I briefly mentioned the ribbon a few minutes ago and it's pretty much the same. You have your categories, like the font category with your font options here, paragraph with the different formatting options in that. One of the noticeable different tabs is the design tab. It consolidates the features for styling a document into one tab. Before, you used to have to click in a bunch of different places to find these options, but now it's consolidated into this one particular tab. You see a bunch of different options here that allow you to change the formatting. You can choose themes, and then over on the right side, there's a bunch of other options that you could do for styling your document. A few interesting new features that you may or may not use one, an alignment with the alignment guide. This has to do with inserting pictures or objects. If you're familiar with using text wrapping, let's see if we can insert something real quick. Whenever you insert an object or a picture, there's an option here called wrap text. And you may have had previous issues with this, but if you had a line of text located here and you wanted this picture or box to be inserted in particular places, 
see the guide. It allows you to line up your object as you want it to be lined up. This is very helpful whenever you have a document with paragraphs on it and it helps you center up an object or line it up correctly with your words. If you use Word for reading documents a lot, it automatically resizes a document to the full window and then you can click the on-screen arrows to flip through pages. We'll see if we can demonstrate. Click on Browse. Copy of the catalog here. The navigation option that came up on the left side. You can switch between headings to easily find what part you're looking for. I'm going to click X to close that out. Down here on the bottom right side, there is a read mode. Click the arrows to point to the next page. To get out of the reading mode, you can simply hit escape on your keyboard or you click down here at the bottom and click on print layout, which is the normal layout that you're used to. Another interesting new feature is the use of tables. If you use tables a lot, I'm going to do a quick table here. You can hover your mouse over on the left side of the table and then click the plus icon to add a new row. And you can also do the same thing for the columns. You can put your cursor up at the top, hover your mouse over and you'll see a plus sign to add a new column. And then also, if you put your cursor over the perpendicular line here, click on it, you get your mini toolbar that has extra options that were there before, like insert table or even delete the table. And you can simply hit those drop down there to insert above, below, left or right for the columns and the rows, or you can hit the drop down for deleting either cells, columns, rows, or the entire table. Okay, now I'll save the best for last. The last interesting feature I'm going to tell you about is that this new version gives you the ability to open and edit PDF documents. So I already have one saved over. I'm going to go to File, Open. You see a recent document here where I was already testing and playing with it. If it's not listed there, you can simply click Computer. Find a location that you recently used or hit browse if you do not see your location there. For now, I'm going back to recent and opening up a travel form. They'll convert it to a Word document. You can choose the option of don't show this message again and click on OK. Now that we have this open, this was a PDF document. You can type in your information as you need to, month and date. just as if it was a regular Word document. Once you are done, you can click on File again, Save As, and then choose a location. If you want it to go to your documents, you can choose that, or Browse if you need to choose a different location. And then save it as a Word document. If you need to save it as a PDF document, click the drop down choose PDF and click Save which of course talking about that I forgot to rename it since we click Save As Save as type is PDF and Save. Now you resaved it as a PDF document and you edit it in Word and that's it. If you have additional questions give us a call at the help desk 809-1515 or you can email us support at jdcc.edu. Thank you.